One of the funny things about the internet today is that more people are using it than ever before, and yet very few people today understand how internet connectivity works and how networks, both local area networks and wide area networks, work. A common misconception is that Wi-Fi equals the internet. That is, it equals internet connectivity. Nothing could be further from the truth. Wi-Fi has absolutely nothing to do with the internet, nothing to do with internet connectivity. The term Wi-Fi has nothing to do with the internet. How can this be, you might ask? Well, I'm going to explain to you as non-technically as possible a little bit about how computers connect to the internet and communicate on a network. First of all, what is Wi-Fi? Contrary to popular belief, it does not stand for wireless fidelity. It doesn't actually stand for anything. It was a pun on Hi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a standard, just like Ethernet is a standard, just like English is a language. So how does this play into network and internet connectivity? Well, we need to understand a little bit about how networks function and operate first. Back when the internet was just a baby, there were not many people using it. The predominant method of getting online was dial-up. For those of you who remember the days when it was really the only way of going online, um, bear with me here. Basically how it worked was you connected your computer to a modem. And now what is a modem, you might ask? Not many people know the difference between modems, routers, and switches. So I'll explain. A modem, short for modulator demodulator, is a device that basically changes the form, the encoding of data. In those days we were using dial-up modems. Now why are modems necessary? Remember, computers are digital, right? It's all zeros and ones. Well, the internet started off pretty much paying back you know, off of the public switch telephone network, which is analog. Now, how do you send computer data, which is digital, over an analog network? Well, you use a modem, which converts digital signals to analog ones, and vice versa. Today, most people don't have dial up modems anymore, but they still have some sort of modem, either a cable modem or a DSL modem, etc. Now, back then, your internet service provider was the local telephone company. You dialed a number, and their dial-up server would connect you to the internet. And prior to 1984, telecom was a monopoly, and AT&T, American Telephone and Telegraph, was basically your only option for telephone service. Now, we did have local area networks back then, with many computers on them, of course, but for the sake of this video, I'm covering only what is related to the internet here. So, what happened? Well, what happened is the internet grew up. It took off. We had the dot-com era. The internet exploded in terms of popularity. Everyone wanted to be online, businesses especially. It was no longer just one computer in the house that needed to be connected to the internet, but multiple. Now, for those of you who remember dial-up, you'll remember we didn't use the internet like we do now back then obviously, because of course when you were online you couldn't use the phone, and when you were on the phone you couldn't go online. Internet connection was something you set up and then terminated. There really weren't any always online internet connections, especially if you had to call long distance for internet access. So what happened is the demand for internet access grew to the point where the old model became outdated. It didn't work for many people anymore. You could only use one computer with the modem meaning you needed a phone line for every single computer you wanted to hook up to the internet. Now today you really don't see telephone wires connected to computers anymore. So what happened? Well, there was an expansion in hardware to meet that need. Predominantly routers, switches were not necessarily new, but they also gained new phone popularity at this time specifically because of the internet. What we have now is, instead of connecting a computer directly to your modem, you connect instead a router to your modem. Now, there's a lot of misconception as to what a router is. A router, by definition, is hardware that connects two networks together. Maybe it has some firewall functions, but for the most part, it just connects two networks together. Today, consumer routers, like those in homes, maybe small offices, are not routers as we're using the term here. We'll talk about that later. Routers just connect two networks together. Now, you might say, well, we have a router and we're not connecting two networks together, we're just using that to connect to the internet. 
Now, the internet is basically just another network. It's a network of networks, but you're essentially connecting to another network. Now, you didn't need routers before, because with just one computer hooked up to a modem, you didn't have a network. It was just one computer, and one computer is not a network. Routers became necessary because a modem just decodes and encodes signals. It doesn't know what to do with the data that passes through it. If one computer is connected to it, it just sends that data the other way. But if multiple computers are connected to it, well, the modem wouldn't know which computer the data is meant for, thus the use of routers. Another way of thinking of routers is this. Private branch exchanges in telecom. Businesses, schools, large organizations, they have these private phone systems with an internal phone system, right? They have their own private phone network. It would be extremely expensive to have a separate phone line for every single telephone in a building. But it's very cheap to have your own private telephone system, have local switching, and then a number of outside lines for outside calls. Likewise, the computers on a local area network are like those internal telephones. The switching equipment is kind of like the router that connects it to the public telephone network. Now, you see a switch in this diagram here. What is a switch? And I think the concept of network switching is relatively easy to understand compared to routers and modems. A switch is something you connect to your router and you can then connect computers to. You have a certain number of Ethernet ports on the switch, 8, 16, 200, and cabling is run from that switch to basically every computer on that network. In this diagram, you see three computers connected to a switch. Again, relatively easy to understand. Another difference is your connection here is no longer dial-up, and this is why dial-up fell out drastically out of popularity. You can't use two computers with dial-up. You can't have a home network with dial-up. You need a separate phone line for every computer. So this is where DSL, cable, internet, fiber optics, etc. start to come into play. And remember, you still use a modem, just a different type of modem, maybe a cable modem now instead of a dial-up modem. So, this is where Wi-Fi comes in. You might say, gosh, I'm watching this video right now, and there are no cables connected to my computer. Well, that certainly may be the case. You may or may not be hardwired into your local area network. The beginning of this millennium is really when Wi-Fi, basically wiring networking, and remember, wireless networking is not wireless internet, took off. When everyone had a desktop computer, there was no need for Wi-Fi, right? Keep in mind that Wi-Fi is slower than a hardwire connection, it's less reliable, it's less secure, it's more expensive to maintain, um, and even now the World Health Organization classifies the radiation emitted by Wi-Fi X points and devices as a class 2B carcinogen in the same category as LUD and DDT. So you might ask, well, why the heck did Wi-Fi take off then? And the answer is portability. People didn't want cables trailing behind their laptops everywhere they went. The sole advantage Wi-Fi has over wired networking is portability. That is it. That is the reason that most desktops today are still hardwired to the network with an Ethernet cable, and always will be. Most desktops don't have wireless capabilities, and the reason is there simply is no need. Um, desktops generally don't move around much, and so there is no advantage of using Wi-Fi over a cable connection only disadvantages. Wi-Fi came about pretty much with the mobile computing revolution. Really, that's what happened. So if you look at the diagram, you'll see we've added another node to the switch, only this time it isn't a computer. It's a Wi-Fi access point, and multiple computers can be connected to that. Some people complain that Wi-Fi is slow. Well, that's because it is slow. You'll notice every hard wired computer has its own private connection to the switch, right? If you're using Wi-Fi, you may be wirelessly connected to a wireless access point, sharing the cable connection back to the switch with 2, 5, 20, 30 people. You might want to think of it this way. If you have a hardwired data connection, you have your own private hallway to move stuff around. If you're using a wireless connection, you're sharing an even smaller hallway because remember, it's basically a law of computing that wireless is never faster than its wired counterpart. You are sharing an even smaller hallway with everyone using that hallway, everyone else using that node, everyone else using that Wi-Fi access point, which is why gamers, those who want low latency, speed, reliability, usually insist on a wired connection. It's just better. Now you might say, hold on there. I see what the point of all this technology is now. But I'm pretty sure we don't have all those things in our home. We just have a little box over there, a few cables, 
and and maybe you're right you don't have all this stuff in your home most likely so what is going on well consumerization happened the industry figured out that every homeowner is going to need a router or a switch possibly want a wireless access point so why not just combine them and that is what they did Today in most homes you buy what you think is a router, but it's really a 3-in-1 device. It's a router, a switch, and a wireless access point, all built into one unit. This device acts as a router, but also has ports built into the back for connecting computers, acting as a switch, and it may also have antennas for wireless network access. Now remember, there really is no such thing as wireless internet access. There's only wireless network access. Because examine what happens when you connect to the network wirelessly. Are you really eliminating the use of cables? No, not really. It's just the final little bit, if you will, of this network topology. It's wireless for you. As soon as your data hits that wireless access point, it's running through copper cables all the way up the stack. So it's important to realize that wireless networking doesn't replace wired networking at all. It is an extension of wired networking. You can have wired networking without wireless networking, but you can't have wireless networking without wired networking. It basically is impossible. But to you, the end user, you don't see all those wires. Your data travels along, so you don't think about wired or wireless, right? Now, how does this relate to wireless internet not existing? Because if you look at the diagram, you'll see that your connection to the network is indeed wireless, but your connection to the internet via your network is still wired. It is the same wired connection that everyone on your network is using, whether you're connecting to the inter to the network wirelessly or not. Um, typically, your internet connection is high-speed fiber optic cable or cable TV cable, maybe a telephone line for DSL, and that internet connection is wired. There is no wireless internet connectivity here. A common misconception, especially on the go, is that, oh, this coffee shop has wireless internet. No, no, they don't. They provide wireless network connectivity, and because you are connected to the network, you can then use their internet connection, which is wired, to go online. Um, that this may seem like a trivial or insignificant thing, who the heck cares anyway? And it is technical by nature, but it's important to realize the distinction. Another misconception, if you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have internet, or maybe if your internet connection is where not working, you might say the Wi-Fi is down or something like that. Again, completely wrong. Wi-Fi and your internet connection have nothing to do with each other. Now, going back to the coffee shop example, they call it wireless internet because the only reason you connect to their network is to go online, right? You're not going to be networking with the other computers on your local area networking. You're only doing it to go online. So that's really why they call it that. If you look at this diagram again, you can clearly see that you can connect your network wirelessly, right? Whether that network is connected to the internet is a completely separate question. The reason we don't think of local area networks as much anymore is because home networking has dramatically decreased in popularity. People just don't seem to want their own file service anymore. They don't FTP. Everyone's hyped up about the cloud and the internet, and people don't really share files on their home network as much anymore. They do it over the internet. In other words, people don't think about their local area network as much anymore. Um, it's an afterthought, it, they take it for granted, and it's kind of lost its significance, if you will, even though without it you wouldn't be able to go online, um, at least with multiple computers. And the internet is basically a network of networks, so the internet really would not exist without your local private network. So you can understand that it is entirely possible to have an internet connection without using Wi-Fi. It is entirely possible to have a fully functional Wi-Fi connection and not be able to get online. Any internet connectivity problems don't have anything to do with Wi-Fi. Those are either the router level, the modem level, or potentially even your internet service provider. It basically comes down to the fact that the internet is a network, but not every network is the internet. In fact, only one network is the internet. So you can use the term networking pretty much anywhere in the schema, but you can only use internet terminology at the router level or above. The term internet has no meaning within your local area network as far as physical connections go. So if you're having internet connectivity issues, um, saying the Wi-Fi is down makes no sense. Um, now could very well be a network issue. Maybe a cable was loose or it was a Wi-Fi issue. That could very well be. But in that case, that was a network issue, not an internet issue.
So it's either one or the other. You can't just pick and choose. So hopefully that cleared up any misconceptions you may have held about Wi-Fi or the internet or our local area networking or, or anything else I've talked about. Maybe what routers and modems do, etc. Again, this is a very tricky subject to understand if you aren't very tech savvy. This discussion is technical in nature, so if you don't understand something, you're not alone. In fact, it's pretty safe to say that over 90% of people who use the internet today misuse terminology and have an incorrect understanding of how this all works. So hopefully you have a better understanding of what's really going on behind the scenes now.